So, uh, to take up exercise. Uh, to take up is a phrasal verb, which we can use to talk about start starting to do any kind of hobby. It doesn't necessarily have to be sports. Oh, dude, look, look, can you see it? Wow, it looks so smooth. It's so nice. Wow, that's beautiful. Best computer ever. Uh, yeah, so take up exercise basically means to start doing any kind of exercise. And remember, this doesn't necessarily need to be exercise. You can say uh, to take up a hobby. So to take up, you know, skiing, to take up uh, baseball. But you, I don't, you usually don't say take up like, for example, baking or take up teaching. Uh, usually it's reserved for like hobbies or not work, basically. Yeah. Uh, next is a personal best. For short, we actually call this a PB. Uh, this is quite a popular term in like every kind of, you know, running, uh, any kind of competitive video games, for example, speed running. We also call it a PB, which means personal best, like the best result that you've ever had. Uh, brisk walk. The adjective brisk can be used to describe a walk that is fast. Like it, it's, it's, it's slower than a jog, but it's faster than average walking. Next, big, huge, massive fan of something. Uh, really good collocation for whenever you want to talk about like liking something, basically. Uh, yeah, can be used in a lot of situations. Uh, good, good, good adjectives. Really good collocation. To be out of condition. Uh, this is used whenever you're talking about uh, not being fit. This isn't necessarily to talk about like being sick, but it's specifically to talk about like whenever you are not, not fit. Like if, if you're sick, there's other words, there's other phrases that are much better to be out of condition is usually when you're talking about like feeling, you know, uh, whenever you're not, not in a sporty mood, whenever you're not sporty, you say to be out of condition. Next is a barbell. It's actually not a barbell. It's, it's barbell. I think barbell, not barbell, I think, but I'm not sure. Uh, the thing is though, barbell is a, like, um, Give me a second. Barbell is a, oh, what's the name? It, it's basically, it's a company. It's not a, like, it's not a, it's not a noun, like a, okay. It's like Coca-Cola, right? Coca-Cola is the name of a specific company. It's not the name of a drink, but everybody calls it like, you know, Coke. You're like, can I have a Coke? And they're talking about a Sprite or something like that. So Barbell is like, it's the name of the company, not the name of the real thing. Yeah. Barbell, Barbell. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, blow the competition it's, it's away. Correct. It's correct. What's what's correct? Barbell or barbell? I mean the written form is absolutely correct. What do you mean the written? No, the written is correct. I'm saying the pronunciation. Shazad, I will kill you. Is it barbell okay, or okay. barbell? Wait, wait, let's check it. Uh, That's British. Wait, wait, wait. Barbell. Barbell. That's British. No, I must check the American. Wait. Yeah, all right. Whatever. Barbell. Barbell. Okay, barbell, not barbell. Okay, cool. Yeah. Anyway, blow the competition away. This is uh, basically, uh, it comes from blow away. So blow away, let me select that. Blow away is a uh, phrasal verb. I'm going to underline that. Phrasal verb, which means to uh, make someone very surprised or to win, basically. So there's two meanings. Like whenever you say blow away, just blow away, for example, it blew me away. That means it surprised me. But you can also say blow the competition away, which means to win some kind of competition very easily. Next is to build muscle. So to build muscle basically means to gain muscle. Whenever you're talking about like getting big muscles, like Shazad, Shazad is really buff, by the way. Um, you mm -hmm. are calling that build. You can also say that you're building your physique. That's also a pretty good example of usage of this phrase. Uh, next is fitness program. Uh, just general, uh, you can also say exercise program. It's basically talking about like the exercises and the sports that you're doing and the time that you're doing it, the regularity, all of that is like fitness program. That's, that's the name. The, 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 the... To get into shape. So kind of similar to, kind of similar to, to be out of condition. It's, it's, it's the opposite of that. So to get into shape means to um, spend effort and like become fit basically to, to, you know, exercise, work out, all that stuff and get into shape. Performance enhancing. Uh, performance enhancing is basically an adjective. It's like one word that is describing a type of drug, right? So for example, steroids, or for example, uh, there's, there's a couple different types. Uh, creatine, I think is a performance enhancing drug. Basically any kind of thing that like sportsmen do to make themselves better rather than just doing sports, like, you know, like injections or like medicine, stuff like that. All of that is called performance enhancing drug. Uh, and you can also use this to, 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 I think, call other things, like, for example, performance-enhancing gear, but I think usually performance-enhancing drug. So, yeah. Average body. This is like a standard man. So not me and Shahzad. Uh, it's like standard height and weight, but also it's, it's uh, you know, you can also say average build. That's also a good good way to put it. Build. Average build. Uh, yeah. That basically um, means, like, 
Physical condition. Yeah. Ultra endurance. Um, it comes from the word endurance, which means it, it, endurance comes from the word endure. I'm going to write that Endure. Endure means to go through some kind of problem or go through some kind of like, you know, um, go through something like some kind of sports, some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of whatever, basically, um, endure a conflict, endure a race, endure a problem, all of these. Uh, and ultra endurance means something that can easily endure. So something that, for, for example, you can have like a, like a pair of shoes that is ultra endurance and they're going to last you very long. Uh, and also like you can have an ultra endurance race. Uh, this, this collocation is used in a lot of situations. It's, it's, it's kind of meaningless at this point because it's used like everywhere. So yeah, let's continue. Specialized body. Uh, <laughs> interesting. Uh, I think specialized body is like connected with like, for example, people who are swimmers, for example, they have very strong arms rather than strong legs and like bicyclists, bicyclists, bicycle racers. Cyclists, cyclists, <laughs> bicyclists, cyclists have like very strong legs, so they have a specialized body. Yeah, I'm not sure whether this is used very common, but it's good to know for reading or for listening. Financial incentive. Ooh, this is a very, very interesting phrase. Actually, this is going to be kind of connected to the topic that we're going to be describing for today's like you know topic topic. So, um, the word incentive comes from the word incentivize or from the word incentive as a whole, and it basically means some kind of bonus or some kind of reason to do something. So for example, um, you know, you can have a question like, why would I want, uh, what kind of incentives will you give me? Like what kind of bonuses will you give me? So financial incentive, of course, financial means connected with money. Financial incentive means like a bonus in money. So for example, why would, you know, Michael Jordan wear Michael Jordan's? Why would he wear his own shoes to play basketball? Well, because when he wears his own shoes, he's promoting his own shoes. Other people want to buy his shoes because he's wearing them. So that is a financial incentive. He's getting money because he's wearing his own shoes. Uh, and like, you know, he's not really paying himself. But like, for example, if Ronaldo wears a pair of Michael Jordans, another sportsman, Jordan is going to give him money. So, my, uh, so, so, so Ronaldo has a financial incentive. He has a money reason to do something. So financial side basically means like money reason. This is a good phrase. You can use it in business. You can use it for work. You can use it for a lot of things. It's, it's great collocation. Let's continue. Athletic performance. Athletic performance is connected with uh, like how well you do in sports. The word performance means like, you know, doing something and being in some kind of like activity, doing something. So athletic performance is like how well you do in some kind of sports. Energy efficient. Energy efficient is uh, a collocation like a, a, I guess it's a word written with a, with a dash. So it's like one word. Basically, energy efficient is, it can be used for different things. Let's say we're talking about um, the environment, right? An, an energy efficient lamp, for example, would be a lamp that doesn't use too much energy. It doesn't like burn any, any wood. It, it, it just, it, it, it's like an LED lamp is very energy efficient. Uh, and the same thing can be used to talk about, for example, some kind of sport. Let's say like uh, running. There's an energy efficient way to run and there's a non-energy efficient. Like if you're running like this with your arms everywhere, that's not energy efficient. But if you're like running like this, like very carefully, that is energy efficient. It means you're saving as much energy as possible. And it can be physical energy or it can be like electrical energy. So both, both of those work. By the way, I have a cup. And just so you guys know, I, I'm such a teacher, like teacher energy that I have a cup that says Mr. Alex. I think you can see it, right? Can you see it? Shazad, can you see it? Are you jealous, Shazad? Shazad? <laughs> I will get one for myself as well. You will? You will? Will you get another one for yeah. me? This one is really old. Get one for me as well. We need to get two cups that say Mr. Alex and Mr. Shazad. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's continue. Okay. Uh, next is different mindset. And actually one more, one more term that maybe you'll see on the internet. The term is grind set. It's, it's a bit of a funny term. Uh, basically, mindset is like, your focus, like what you're thinking about and how your mind works. Uh, so when you say like, I have a different mindset, it's kind of a cheesy phrase. It's a little bit funny, but it basically means like you think differently. Um, there's a, a lot of situations where you can use this phrase and it will sound good. But uh, basically, yeah, grind set comes from the word grind, which means like to work very hard. So grind set is like, instead of having a mindset, you have a grind set because you're working so hard. It's, it's a funny, funny, funny topic. This is something that Andrew Tate probably says a lot. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Tearing tendons. Tendon is, uh, so uh, I'm not like a, I'm not a biologist. I'm not really a doctor, but I can explain it pretty roughly. So you have like your hand, right? Imagine this is my hand. Uh, and here I have the muscle. Let's say this is the muscle right here, right? 
And then right here, where the muscle connects to the bone, there is a little piece of, like, material. It's not bone. It's not, like, muscle. It's, it's in between. It's called, a, it's called cartilage. And whenever it's connecting, like, your bone and your muscle, then it's called a tendon. So if you tear your tendon, for example, like, you're walking, and here, here's your foot, right? Here's, like, your leg. Yeah, this is difficult to explain. Imagine this is my foot. Oh, here, here, here. Imagine this is my foot, right? This is me walking. And then I step like this. And, like, my, my leg twists the other way. And then the tendons rip. That's called, a, like, tearing tendons. Maybe this actually happens to you. It, it's quite often. Uh, it, it's a quite... It happens quite often to people. Uh, it's called a torn LCL, I think. I'm not sure what that is because I've never had it, fortunately. Uh, but basically, yeah, this, this is also a very popular collocation, torn LCL. And lastly, controversial issue. Uh, simple, I think that makes sense. Some kind of problem in society that everybody knows about. All right, let's continue. Let's get into idiomatic expressions. As I always say, two types of idioms. Idioms that are like, you know, outside of the context of what you're saying, like kill two birds with one stone and expressions that can be put into your speaking very uh, fluently and in a very cool way. Uh, so these are the ones that we're talking about. Idiomatic expressions, they're very good for your speaking. So you actually cannot get speaking seven without them. So to acquire a taste for something. This is the idiomatic expression. You can say snowboarding. You don't have to say snowboarding. You can just say to acquire a taste for something. So some kind of sport, some kind of activity, anything. Uh, it means to begin to enjoy. So it, uh, acquire means to get, and a taste for means like you like doing it because it tastes good. Um, to give an example sentence, recently I acquired a taste for carding because I really enjoy fast traveling. Yeah. Next is to get the hang of it. Uh, I'm actually not sure exactly where this phrase comes from. I know that the idea is like, imagine like you're a monkey, right? And the monkey is going like this on a, on a swing, right? And the monkey gets the hang of it. It understands how the hanging works. Uh, I'm, I'm not a monkey, so I wouldn't know. But basically, uh, to get the hang of it means to start understanding how something works. Yeah. Uh, next is to take up the challenge. Take up is a very, very good... I'm actually going to underline that. And, whoop, and I'm going to unbold this. To take up is, uh, if you remember, 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 to take up exercise. The same phrase, you can start talking about exercise or you can talk about a challenge, for example. Yeah. So uh, good collocation either way. Great phrase. To push myself to the limits. Uh, in general, I would say to push something to the limits. This is the, the main idiomatic expression. Uh, this can be used for technology. This can be used for relationships. This can be used for sports. Really, really good idiomatic expression. This is why uh, idiomatic expressions are so important. And this is why we're teaching them this course. Because I, we realized last course that we're really missing them. There's not enough of them. They're very necessary. And like, um, as you can see, push myself to the limits. Push something to the limits. Let, let me give an example. Um, recently, we have been pushing the ability of different processors to the limits. Because now they are so small that we cannot make them any better. Example. Uh, that's technology. Number two example. Um, my marriage has been pushed to the limits. <laughs> I'm not married. Uh, so it's fine. Anyway, uh, yes, basically, uh, this is a phrase that can be used in every situation. It's a very, very good phrase. I recommend you use it. Shazar, did you say something? Are you saying some funny things? No. It looks like green and I'm stressed because I think you're speaking, but I can't hear you. Shazar, when are you getting married? Tell me right now, right now. Tell me, tell me. Uh, next year. Yeah, you will be the best man. I will be the best man. Thank you. Thank you, Shazam. All right, I, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's continue. Um, to have a whale of a time. I'm actually not going to cover this one. It's it's a good phrase, but I wouldn't use it. It's a little bit too cheesy, a little bit too old. But you can. it's a good idea to remember it because it's probably going to be on your reading. Uh, to jump at the chance. To jump at the chance means to um, do something as soon as you can do it. So, for example, uh, let's imagine that... Uh, let's imagine that, let's imagine that, let's imagine that you have been trying to go snowboarding for the past year, but you cannot go snowboarding because there's no snow because you live in Uzbekistan. Very sad situation. Uh, so as soon as snow comes out, you jump at the chance. So as soon as there's a chance, you jump at it, you go and do it. So basically, uh, this means to like really want to do something. So it's a good phrase. Uh, next is to summon up the energy. So to summon up the energy means to 
summon basically means to create something or to call something. So to summon up something means basically to um, summon up, summon up, summon up basically means to make an effort to do something, to, to like really try to do something. Uh, and lastly is to keep in shape. Uh, so there's uh, also another one. I'm going to underline it. So keep, stay in shape. Both of these are good phrases to talk about, like continuing to be healthy. So we have a phrase like not healthy, which is out of condition. We have a phrase for starting to be fit, which is to get into shape. And the last one is like stay, uh, staying in shape. We, we have to keep or to stay in shape. Okay. Uh, real quick, before we do move on, here is something that I need you guys to do for me. Uh, if you have an Instagram, as always, I'm still doing this. This is going to be the last lesson for this. Uh, if you have an Instagram, please... Uh, make a stories and tag me, Alex Native Wilds, and write three words that you learned this lesson. So whatever le words that were interesting for you, especially these words right here, these collocations, they're amazing. Three of them that you learned, tag me and write whichever ones. That would be very nice. I'd be very grateful if you could do that. Thank you all so much. Uh, let's continue. Uh, collocations with sport. So as you remember, collocation is like a very popular word or some kind of word that is um, commonly used. The main thing is commonly used uh, with the word sport. They sound good and like, especially native speakers, this is the difference between a native speaker and a non-native speaker. Uh, because we hear English so much and because we know so many of the popular phrases, uh, hearing these sounds better. This is kind of the thing. A lot of native speakers, uh, whenever like, you know, you, you give them this kind of phrase, they will tell you what sounds good and what doesn't. It's mostly because this is what's popularly used. It's kind of weird, but it's like we have a counter in our brain that tells us how many times we've heard this. And, you know, over time, you can also gain this ability, but, you know, it's, it's much easier for a speaker because English is everywhere for them. So for this, for example, it's a spectator sport. Spectator sport is, um, I watch it. Uh, spectator sport is a great phrase. It's a great collocation. And let me tell you exactly what it means. It's a little bit like complicated. So there's a lot of sports where you are, um, not interested in watching them. So for example, like, you know, curling. Does anybody watch curling? No, not really. Like, you know, curling is, have you guys, Shavza, can you explain curling? Do you know what that is? I only watch football. Exactly. Because football is a spectator sport because everybody likes watching it. So curling is like one of those sports where you have like a piece of ice and you have like one of those heavy little like balls with a handle on it and you have to push it on the ice and you have to get it into a hole. It's some something really stupid that like white people do for fun. Nobody cares about it. Nobody watches it. I think there's like three and a half people that watch curling and they only watch it because they play curling themselves. <laughs> so yeah, uh, basically spectator sport is any kind of sport that nobody really cares about other than the people that actually play it. Uh, next is a competitive sport. So competitive sport is a kind of sport that is uh, like very serious. A lot of people that they play it, um, they, they play it to win specifically. Like for example, football is competitive. There's also casual football. I'm going to write that down. Casual football, uh, which is, which is, which is a good, uh, good also collocation, casual sport, but competitive sport is like something where you are trying to win. Yeah. Lastly, contact sport. Uh, contact sport means like a sport where you physically touch other players. So for example, uh, golf is not a contact sport. You don't touch anybody in golf. You touch the ball with your stick and that's it. Um, but for example, American football, where you're like, you know, no normal football, uh, where you're like running like this, like, psh, and you hit other people, that is a contact sport. Football, like soccer is not really a contact sport, like 50, 50, um, kind of, yes, kind of not. Hockey is also a contact sport because you can just like punch other players like it. Yeah. Also MMA, you know, different kinds of martial arts. They are also contact sports. Yeah. Let's continue. Uh, so yeah, these collocations are great. We'll learn them as well as these ones. These words, like from here to here, if you get the topic of sport and you use at least three or four of these, you're guaranteed to have a really good lexical score if you use them correctly because it's just juicy, great expressions, uh, really good stuff. Let's continue. Let's talk a little bit about personality types. I'm not going to get into, I think, all of these. I think some of them kind of make sense. Oh, these ones are pretty good. Let's see how much time we have left for today. I think we have... 40 minutes? Let me check, let me check. 40, 40, 40 minutes, minutes, yeah. 40 minutes, we good? Okay, cool. Um, let me get into the words that I think are important, and then from there we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna see. So, uh, confident, I think that makes sense. Awkward. Awkward is the opposite of confident. It basically means somebody who is uncomfortable with themselves and somebody who feels uncomfortable. Like, the way that they say things is not very, um, 
not very confident, basically. It's like they're, they're, they're speaking kind of like this, and, and they're very slow. Like, they're, they're scared, basically. They're like an introvert. And uh, this, does, this isn't necessarily bad, but it's just, like, uncomfortable, basically. Um, yes, let's continue. Put up a facade. This word we say as facade uh, because of the little C. Uh, facade comes from the word facade. I think it's French or maybe, I don't know. I don't know some other language, but it's not English. Uh, facade basically means like a, you have a building, you have the back of the building, which is made of like bricks or whatever kind of material, right? And then you have the front of the building that has like all of the beautiful color and, you know, the, the way that it looks at the front. So that's what the word facade is. So when you put up a facade, it means like you have your face, you have yourself, and then you have the wall that you're building up, like a colorful wall, like a, like a fake face. That's what the word facade means. Uh, really good, really good, like, way to explain a personality. Like, somebody who puts up a facade. Really good stuff. Next is a control freak. A control freak. You probably know somebody in your life. Somebody who always needs to control everything. Somebody who always needs to, you know, make sure everything is clean, make sure everything is in the right order, like, the, the perfect way. But not your way, their way. They're a control freak. They like controlling everything. Uh, let's continue. Next is an eye for detail. Uh, this is the same as an eye for fashion, kind of similar. Basically, you are good at seeing small things. So pretty cool collocation. Next is reliable slash dependable. Uh, this one kind of makes sense. Somebody who you can trust, somebody who you can give some kind of like task and they will do it. Um, punctuality makes sense. Something I don't have. Disrespectful, somebody who is not like, you know, um, respecting other people, somebody who doesn't understand that other people need to be listened to and they don't have courtesy. Uh, courtesy. Courtesy, I think. Cur not curtsy. Not courtesy. No, sorry. Not curtsy. A lot of people say curtsy. That's incorrect. Courtesy. Yeah. Uh, this basically means like, you know, like a, a gentleman. You know, like a gentleman, they will open a door for a woman. They will be nice and all that kind of stuff. That's courtesy. So disrespectful is somebody who doesn't do that. Negative traits. That makes sense. Trait means characteristic, like a personality trait. Uh, interpersonal skills, very good collocation to use to talk about, like, talking to other people. But it's not necessarily talking, it's also about, like, communication as a whole. Because communication isn't only talking, communication is also, you know, communicating. I think that makes sense. Oh, yeah, Shahzad, thank you for writing, joining the lesson. That's a, that's a good idea. That's a good, I forgot about that. We gotta make, like, a checklist, like, you know, message everybody, share the screen, record the lesson, and then I'll never forget. Uh, yeah. Okay, next is going to be, next is going to be. Next is going to be uh, empathetic. Empathetic comes from the word empathy, not from the word uh, not from the word pathetic. Uh, empathy means whenever you can feel what other people feel. It doesn't necessarily mean understanding other people. It means feeling their feelings. There's actually a very big difference, uh, at least in terms of you know psychology. There's a difference because empathy 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 is about feeling other people's feelings. So uh, this is a good like a thing to call yourself, for example, or to call somebody else, like ex to explain someone, someone who's empathetic. Generous listener. Also, you can say a very popular collocation is good listener, basically. Uh, somebody who likes to listen to other people. Next is to emulate. This is a very cool phrase. Very good collocation. Emulate means to fake something, to look like something, to be like something, but not actually to be it. It just looks similar. So for example, um, if you are emulating Emulating love, it means like you're showing love, but actually you don't feel anything inside. It just means like you're showing some kind of feelings. Uh, yeah. And, and you can say that somebody is like emulating um, sorrow and it looks like they feel sad, but actually they're not sad. So yeah. Let's continue. Diligent. Uh, this is a good word. It means somebody who is working very hard. You guys, a lot of you are diligent. A lot of you are not diligent. We will find out who is and who's not. Uh, extrovert and introvert. I think that makes sense. Uh, and lastly, passionate is a person who feels very strongly about something. A lot of emotions about like some kind of um, topic or some kind of like something. Yeah. Next is um, nonverbal. Yeah, let's get into this. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to go bold and then I'm going to go underline. Yeah. Uh, nonverbal comes from the word verbal. Verbal comes from the word... Um, I don't think it comes from the word verb. I think it's it's another one. I think it comes from ver. Let me actually check. Give me one moment because it's kind of interesting. Shazad, by the way, how are we doing on like the, the video or some kind of aspect when I'm going to be not talking? Are we going to do that today or not? Uh, what kind of video did you have in mind? 
I did not have any videos in mind because I actually mm-hmm. forgot, but I'm just asking like in terms of, remember we were talking about that. Are we going to do that or not? No, I guess we good. Okay. Okay. You said, I guess we could, or I guess we good. We good. Okay. Can we, can we do that like next lesson or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can keep it going this lesson if you want to do something few minutes. Yeah, can you can you talk for like I don't know like like three minutes? My throat is dead. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you know what nonverbal means? Uh. Yeah. Here, yeah well, like let me explain nonverbal. Um... Okay. Let me explain this one because I already started, and then from you, you can go from here to to here. Okay. Nonverbal basically means it comes from the word verbal, and verbal means to do with language whenever you're like speaking. So nonverbal basically means uh, communicating using not spoken language. So for example, like imagine you're sitting with your friend and you go like this. It means let's go. Or you look at him like this and it means you said something stupid or you look at him like this, uh, like this. And it means that you both are about to die. For example, so that's nonverbal communication, communication without words. So yeah, you can also say uh, nonverbal way. So like, how should I explain it to him? Explain it to him in a nonverbal way. Yeah. Okay. Shows up. Take it away. Okay. Yep. Uh, so, guys, before explaining the vocabulary, I would like to say that. So, as you know, I got eight from speaking, and the main reason I got speak eight from speaking is vocabulary. Vocabulary is like I would say the most important part of your speaking. And that's why uh, you have to make um, uh, my biggest advice for you would be, as I got eight, would uh, to make, you know, your passive vocabulary, you should make it your active vocabulary. And that's the biggest difficulty that students face. And uh, we have sent some messages about it, actually, because this is the biggest problem. A lot of students say, and as you know, I have told hundreds of students and uh, a lot of can- IELTS candidates, they say, oh, you know what, I struggle when it comes to turning my passive vocabulary into active vocabulary. What kind of message do you suggest? And for that, uh, there's actually like really, really great methods. So, for example, let's say I am a learner as well, and I'm learning the word, um, let's say, uh, body language. So, uh, I, or let, let's, let's say face-to-face. I'm learning the word face-to-face. And what I did to get aid and what I did to make my passive vocabulary, active vocabulary was making a lot of examples. And firstly, simple and then complex. So the f- simple example would be something like, okay, face-to-face communication is important. Face-to-face communication is preferred. Uh, I like face-to-face communication. I like talking to my friends face-to-face. Uh, a lot of people in our country talk face to face. So few simple examples so that your brain, you know, and your vocabulary and memory becomes familiar with the words that you are learning. There is no point of just learning vocabulary. You have to practice what you are learning. This is my biggest and the most important recommendation for all of you. And then some complex sentences. For instance, okay, face to face. Well, I would say that face-to-face communication is absolutely important, and I believe that there is a genuine interaction in face-to-face communication. I also believe that it builds a strong bond among individuals. Therefore, uh, I would say that uh, compared to uh, online communication, face-to-face communication should be valued more in our society. So now, as you can see, really complex and really long sentences. So that in this way, by making a lot of examples, by saying a lot of sentences and probably answering some questions and using this vocabulary, you will actually start using this vocabulary. If you start using the vocabulary that we are teaching, oh my God, your vocabulary, your speaking can fly to another level immediately. And the only way to do that is practice a lot. Every day, practice a lot. Make a lot of sentences, as I have showed right now. Good. Thank you so much, Shazad. All right, let me let me continue. Uh, okay. <clears throat> yes, Shazad is correct. Absolutely. What he said. Thank you, Shazad. Yeah. Uh, let's continue. 
Uh, facial expression. So facial expression comes from a facial, which means to do with the face. Facial comes from a, like it's connected with the face, and expression means like some kind of um, emotion or some kind of idea. So when you say facial expression, it basically means showing your feelings on your face. And uh, this can be used like, it, it's basically a noun. So for example, like when I go like this, that's a facial expression. When I go like this, that's a facial expression. Each of those is like the way my face looks, basically. That's what facial expression means. Next, oral communication. Oral communication comes from the word oral, which means connected with the mouth. For example, oral history. Oral history is something where, like, you know, the old generations, the, the people from the, from the past, they gave information, uh, they gave information, like, you know, to each other one by one, one by one, uh, by talking, right? So, like, in the past, when they didn't have any kind of writing, uh, or, for example, in Africa, where they don't have any writing right now, they have the history that they tell, they, they, they tell about, they, they use their mouths. So, it's called oral communication and oral history. Yeah, let's continue. Eye contact and body language. Eye contact basically means like, you know, eye to eye. Uh, body language means like um, communication via movements of the body. This is like a very popular, I think, topic in like psychology books, you know, where um, it's a popular topic in psychology books where, for example, like the way somebody is standing whenever they're talking to you, like, are they facing this way or this way? Is somebody looking like this or like this? Are they like keeping their hands like this or like this? Like, you know, all that kind of stuff. All of that is called body language. That is like the language of the body, the language that your physical appearance demonstrates. So that is, that is also a pretty popular phrase. Last is distract. Uh, next is distract. Uh, distract basically means to take away attention from something. This can be used for a lot of different things. Um, so like, for example, you can, you can distract someone, uh, you can be distracting. That's also a very popular collocation, uh, like distracting person, distracting activity, something like that. By the way, oh my God. Oh my God. Shaza, do you see the screen isn't black anymore? Can you guys see that? It's not doing the little thing. It's like, it's nice. Is that nice guys? Raise your hand in the chat. If that's nice. If you're happy, please raise your hand in the chat. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. New computer. Woo -hoo, baby. Yeah. I'm so happy. It's been so long. It's so annoying. You know, like I would try to work and it just wouldn't do anything. My computer would just sit there black completely. Nothing would happen because it's so old. My computer, my new computer is so nice. Can I actually, I want to show it to you guys one second. Let me show you my computer, bro. It's such a, so nice. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Look at, look at it. Look at him. Look at it. Look at it. Is it, is it not like nice? Is it not nice? Do you see it? Do you see it? Intel Core i7. For you people that know anything about computers, oh, there you are. Uh, for you people that know anything about computers, it has 40 gigabytes RAM. It has like 3.3 uh, gigahertz per second, like right now, and it can go up to 4.7 gigahertz per second on this processing speed. It's crazy. It's it's ah beautiful computer. Sorry. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> yes. Next is inattentive. Inattentive comes from the word attentive, which comes from the word attention. So inattention is inattentive is like somebody who doesn't really uh, care to look to something. They, they, they're not paying attention basically. So you can call somebody inattentive. It means that they're not paying attention. Interfere means to like get into something, get involved with something and to like, um, hinder something uh, specifically hinder. Basically the word hinder, uh, difficult word hinder. How do I explain it? Um, to be a problem for somebody. So imagine somebody is trying to like do something and you interfere with them. That means that you are stopping them from doing what they need to do. So yeah. Posture. Posture means like the way that you sit. So like, is your back like this? Are you sitting like that? Like all that stuff. That's what posture is. Uh, and this can be used for walking. This can be used for sitting. So a very good collocation is like sitting posture. So the way that you are sitting. Another very good collocation is uh, like standing posture. Um, yeah. And so just in general, posture is like the, w the way that you, you know, you do something like the form of the body when you're doing something. Next is soothe. Soothe means to make somebody calm. Simple, easy, makes sense. Okay. I think we have, we have, we have, we have, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me take a look. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's continue. I'm going to skip a couple of these. Um, inherent. This is a very, very good phrase that I think you can use. A very good verb uh, word that you can use for a lot of different things. Inherent comes from the word, I actually don't know what the, what, the, what the word is, but basically inherent means like, um, 
something that exists as a part of something, some something that is already there. So, for example, like let's say, um, inherent problem. So, for example, if you have a society where uh, something is always the same, like for example, every single person from that society doesn't know how to read because their language doesn't have any kind of written language, right? That is an inherent problem. That is a problem that already exists. It always exists. So inherent basically means something that is always the same, something that is always continuing. Let's continue. Emerge. Emerge basically means to come about because of something or just in general to come about. Emerge means to like, there's nothing there. And then, and it starts existing. That is what the word emerge means. Another very popular word that comes from the same, from, from the same root is emergence. Uh, not emergency. That is different. Emergence. Emergence is, um, emergence is whenever like something appears. Oh, there we go. That's better. Uh, whenever something appears, whenever you like, when, um, for example, the emergence of scooters in the Uzbek market, like the appearance, whenever they started happening, whenever they started appearing. So that's what the word emerge means. Uh, lastly is imply. Uh, this is, I think, the last verb for right now. Imply basically means to say something without saying it. So whenever you are like explaining some kind of um, idea to somebody, no, no, sorry, sorry. Uh, let's say you're at a at like a restaurant with your friend and you want to go. You have to go to your work and you say, "Wow, look at the time." And your friend looks at the time and he's like, "Oh, you have to go." So it's like what you're actually saying, what you're implying, is that you're late. But what you're saying is, look at the time. So imply basically means to say something without saying it, like the underlying idea. And the underlying idea is called implication. This is a, also a very good word, implication. Uh, Google ways to use these words, and you should also write down the usage of them. Great words, absolutely, just very nice words. So for right now, let's continue. Uh, let's get on to, let's get on to this. Um, in part three, there are going to be different kinds of topics connected to like young people. And specifically, um, what I'm going to be explaining to you guys and what we're going to be talking about today is something that I think some of you are going through, not necessarily all of you, but um, this is something that I think a lot of like IELTS takers are going through, which is um, changes related to youth, right? So whenever, whenever you're like, whenever you're really young, whenever you're a child, uh, the process of growing up, so becoming from a child into like a, an adolescent and then an adult, in general, all of this is called, I'm going to actually write this down, uh, do, 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 do. all of this is called... Adole wait, I'm gonna see. Adolescence. <gasps> I spelt it right the first time. Genius. Absolutely. Just master English speaker. Uh yeah. Adolescence, the synonym is youth. Um yeah. So there are some things that happen whenever you are an adolescent, whenever you're like that age. Uh physical and emotional changes. Uh so like you can really this is like a very good collocation. Physical and emotional changes. Uh, I really recommend you to use it if you're going to be talking about like, you know, becoming older. So you can say, you know, I was going through a lot of emotional changes. I was going through a lot of physical changes. Great collocation, great phrase. Uh, next is academic expectations. So what this is, this whole idea, what is academic expectations? Like whenever you're a kid, you know, whenever you're growing up, you go to school and they tell you, okay, bro, listen, here's some paper, here's some scissors, and here's some glue make something. You're a genius. And then you go, you make like, I don't know, some piece of trash. You give it to the teacher and the teacher says, Oh, you're so smart. Good job, bro. And then like one year later, you go to school, you go to like middle school and the teacher tells you, okay, bro, 57 times 63 plus 97. And you tell him, I don't know. And the teacher looks at you and he says, you're stupid. You're an idiot. I hate you. So that is like academic expectations. That is the whole idea that like when you get older, Teachers want more from you. School wants more from you. And for some people, it's kind of difficult. And so in general, that whole topic is academic expectations. That is actually also something that you're experiencing right now because whenever you're studying IELTS, that is also academic. That is also uh, the word academic you can actually use to talk about that. A lot of people, even when you're studying IELTS for work, IELTS is still an academic subject because it's about academia. It's about learning. So yeah. Uh, personal freedom, uh, people, a lot of people, like, especially teenagers, this whole topic, like adolescence, uh, you know, it's kind of the transition from being too young to make decisions for yourself and becoming an adult where you have to make decisions for yourself. So personal freedom is the topic of like, you know, should your parents let you, uh, you know, drive a car? Uh, should they let you do this? And should they let you do that? This whole topic, like, uh, you know, you can say something like, you know, when I was a kid, I really wanted to become a biologist, but my parents wanted me to be a doctor something like that. Uh, so personal freedom is like the, the whole idea 
for that. Specifically, personal freedom is a very good collocation. In general, I recommend you to read this whole text because it, it, it gives you some like ideas to talk about this stuff. Uh, friends and peer pressure. Specifically, peer pressure I want to talk about because actually this is something that I, I, I found out people don't talk about in Uzbek schools. And this is a very big thing. They talk about this in American schools. This is a very big subject, very important subject. And it's, it's a very like big point for a lot of teachers. So um, what is peer pressure? Let's start with the word peer. Uh, peer means like from your friends, basically from, from people at your own level, keyword at your own level and pressure is like pushing, right? Uh, people at your own age, specifically people, your own age, they are pushing you to do something. They tell you to do something. And then when you say, no, I don't want to, they say, bro, it's cool. Trust me, bro. Do it, do it, bro. It's okay. It's a good idea, bro. And then you do it because you think, okay, they say it's cool. I'm going to do it. And then you found out it was a terrible idea. For example, smoking. I feel like a lot of people nowadays are smoking. And, you know, for example, like those like e-cigarettes in Uzbekistan, they're everywhere. I don't think I've talked to a single person for the past, like, I don't know, month. And they don't smoke something, especially those cigarettes. It's terrible. I hate it. I think it's really stupid. I don't smoke anything myself. Personally, I will never smoke anything. And a lot of people, you know why they started smoking? They go outside to talk to their friends and their friends are smoking. And they're like, hey, bro, you want to try? You want to try? It, it tastes like strawberry. Try it, bro. And then they try it. And they can't stop because it's addictive. That is peer pressure. That is the whole topic of peer pressure. And like, um, keep this in mind. Learn to say no. This is like more than just an IELTS topic. This is a real life thing. Learn to say no. A lot of people don't know how to say no whenever they are uncomfortable. It's important. Um, so yeah, just in general, peer pressure is like the topic of when, you know, other people make you do something even though you don't want to. So yeah, let's continue. Uh, next is dating. We're not going to be talking about this because it's not applicable. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's get on with it. Uh, let's talk about some part one, part two, part three questions. I think we're going to be doing part one and two today. Sports. Uh, I'm going to take a picture of this. Shahzod. Shahzod. Yo. Bro. Uh, are you ready to be asking me the questions? Yep. Okay, give me one second, one second. Pause. Pause. Shahzod. Tohta. Yeah, I love the Uzbek language, man. I've been I've been trying to learn it like sometimes. It's 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 really cool. I don't know why. I just I like it. It's it's a good language. Shazad, how long have you been learning the Uzbek language? Tell me. Tell me, Shazad. Like twenty five years. You guys don't know, but Shazad is actually a Chinese native speaker. He's a Chinese spy. He's he's really yeah. cool though. He's yeah, he's from China. He's 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 my best Chinese friend. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. That's a joke. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just, I'm in a good mood today. That's why I'm making so many jokes. Shahzad is a lead. I love him. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's start with part one. Part one. Uh, Shahzad, are you ready? Are you ready, bro? Yep. Do you like okay. watching sports programs on TV? Okay. I'm going to be using the vocabulary from today. So you are going to be getting a, uh, like direct native speaker usage of these words. Um, actually I'm not a fan of TV at all, uh, but I am a massive fan of different competitive video games, for example, tech and especially Tetris. Tetris is one of my most favorite games. Uh, and so, you know, I really like watching some of my favorite, like top level players blow the competition away. Uh, you know, the, the, the best part of, about Tetris for me is that, uh, you don't have to get into shape. You can just play regardless of how you are. Next question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one minute. Wait, wait. Okay. Do you have the questions or not? Actually, yeah. Wait, wait. Actually, I opened the file, so you don't have to, you know, go back and forth. So you can stay on the vocabulary part, and I can be asking Perfect. questions on my own. Perfect. Thank you, Shazza. If anything, I can just show you my phone like this. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you can stay. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Uh. So, what was your favorite sport when you were young? When I was young, I actually really liked playing soccer. Um, in, in, in my school, uh, there was like a, there was a very big soccer team, especially for the kids that were overweight, because whenever you play American football, uh, it's a contact sport. And so because of that, you have to be in shape or else when you fall down, there's a chance of injury. So they recommended me to play soccer because it could help me get into shape faster and, you know, build some muscle. Uh, and I really enjoyed it, even though I had a very average body at the time, I wouldn't say, you know, I, I did any kind of ultra endurance games, uh, but you know, it was just really fun. And I, I learned a lot about, um, 
I learned a lot about how to have like a sports mindset and how to how to actually play sports. Okay. Uh, what's the difference between watching sport events at home and at the stadium? I think that it's really about the the environment. I think that a lot of people actually watch sports on like uh, at the stadium. Not just because of the sport itself. Of course, it can be very exciting when you see someone, you know, get a PB, get their personal best, really, you know, do the best that they've ever done. Uh, but I think that the, the best feeling is when you are with your team and you, you are with the people that are supporting your team and all of you stand up at the same time with the same kind of excitement and the same kind of feelings. I think that it's really about, uh, you know, that kind of sports environment. I think that's why people like watching sports at the stadium. Yeah. All right. Perfect. And now, actually, before like moving on to part two, uh, how about I ask you some part three questions as the main topic we discussed was about young people and uh, this kind of stuff. So, and... Wait, part three is about, is about young people? Oh, okay, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, connected to our topic, you know, our questions. So, uh, the, the ideas that you discussed. So, how about you show those ideas, how you can use those ideas and how our students sure. can use those ideas in their Good speech idea. and the vocabulary. Yeah, well, let's do it. Absolutely. Yeah, so, I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using these words. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry, not the words. I'm going to be using these words from over here, like other words. Uh, and I'm also going to be using this topic. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. yeah. So the question is, what topics should parents discuss with their children? Mm. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that one of the most important topics that any parent can have with their child. Uh, and I, th I think this is, this is different. This is regardless of culture and regardless of the country. I think the biggest one in today's changing world is academic expectations. I feel like this is like a conversation on this topic uh, that needs to happen in every single household. And specifically, I think different kinds of Asian households like Chinese, uh, S Singapore, uh, th these kinds of households in like countries, they have very big expectations. If you don't get an A, you're out of the house. If you're not a doctor by like 15, you are, you have to pay for, you know, for your own food, for your own electricity, for everything. Uh, and these kinds of like expectations and this pressure from your parents, especially who you usually really respect, uh, they can really tear a rift. They can really cause a lot of problems in the household, uh, especially for children that are like less academically inclined. They're not very good at, you know, science or, or, or math or all that stuff. So I think that um, understanding the mutual understanding between what the what the what the child wants to do is the biggest conversation that needs to happen in households between parents and children. Wow, okay. perfect. And uh, one moment. The next one is um, what topics do young people talk about in general? I think when people talk to each other. A lot of things that they talk about is personal freedom. And, uh, you know, I think it's kind of like a stereotype that, you know, kids from the U.S., they, um, they like to, you know, tell their parents what to do. And I think to some extent it's true, but also I think that, you know, I've, I've kind of, I've witnessed and I've talked to a lot of kids that I've been teaching here in Uzbekistan. Uh, and I've noticed that there, there's not a lot of, like, personal freedom. And I, th I think that a lot of kids, they talk to each other about what happens in their household. At least in the U.S., for, for me personally, what I've seen is that, you know, you, you talk about like, you know, oh, you know, uh, I, I got a car. Oh, I didn't get a car, you know, something like that. And, you know, there's like a lot of there's, there's a lot of intrigue, a lot of like things that are happening, I guess. Uh, and, and it's really about gossip. I think that, that most of the time kids gossip to each other about different things. And I don't think it's like important conversations. I just think uh, it's, it's, it's what's on their mind. Yeah, I think that's the main thing that people talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the next question is, um, why do some people dislike chatting with others? All right. Um, I think that a lot of people become very reclusive, uh, especially like it's, it's kind of a societal problem these days. And in different countries, like for example, Japan, um, a lot of people become this way because of peer pressure and because of the way that their friends are interacting with them. I think that when you have like a person who is very, you know, um, nonverbal, like a person who 
doesn't like speaking, they like physical contacts, or for example, they like listening to music, uh, it can be difficult for them to acclimate to the environment where everybody's talking, especially like very talkative people and very silent people. Uh, they kind of, they clash a little bit, I think, in that. Uh, and, you know, I think that especially like a lot of people, they don't like banter. Um, a lot of people get bullied because of peer pressure. Uh, and so I think that that could be a very big reason and a very like emergent social issue in the past couple of decades uh, with, with people bullying each other. So I think, I think that's the main thing. When, when people get bullied, they don't want to talk to other people. Mm -hmm. And can people communicate if they don't speak the same language? Yeah, for sure. For sure they can. Uh, you know, it's, um, it's been proven. There's been some science about the fact that communication is like only 20% on the verbal level. 80% of it is like your face, the tone in which you're saying things. Like for example, if you're at a store and you hear the manager go, ah, blah, 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 and, and he shows you with his finger to the door, you don't need to know what he's saying for you to know that he's telling you to get out, you know? Uh, and, and, and I think a lot of communication and a very like un, unseen part of communication is the the facial and the nonverbal. And I think that a lot of people underestimate just how important that kind of communication is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Perfect. And cool. I, I, think, last... I think that's about it for part three. I'll, let's get to part yes. two. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Let's, Let's move on to part two. So everybody, everybody, as you guys remember, get out your paper. We're going to be all preparing at the same time. Then I'm going to be speaking and Shahzad is going to be writing down the words that I, uh, I, I, um, <laughs> he's going to, he's going to be writing down the words that I'm using, right? Shahzad, is that what you're going to be doing? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's make it better and more enjoyable. Thank you. Shahzad. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. And, uh, yes, one second. Here is the topic. Uh, describe a person you enjoyed talking with. Let me let me copy that. Let me copy that. Let me, let me copy that. Ooh, uh, ooh, 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 ah. uh, let me get some paper. One moment. I, I I promise I'm not cheating. I just don't have any paper, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, I I don't cheat. I promise I don't cheat, guys. Believe me. Okay, so here's some paper. I have one minute. Everybody, all of us have one minute. I sent it to the wrong place. I am a I am a I am a man. I'm a... One second. I can send it, no problem. No, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, describe a person you enjoy talking with. So, all of us, we've got one minute. Let's get right into it. One minute starting now. Okay, so the one minute timer is up. I'm going to be starting the two minute timer after a second. Let's get right into it. Okay, here's the two minute timer and a boop, boop. All right, uh, I would like to describe a person that I enjoy talking to. And actually this, this whole conversation kind of happened very randomly. And I even want to say that I, I don't remember the name of the person that I was talking to. Um, it's, it was a one time conversation with a person that I have never met again. I, and I don't think I will ever meet her. Uh, I was about 11 at the time and I was, I was golfing. I used to be like a very, very serious golfer at uh, 11 years old. And I, um, the, the golf club where I played was, I think around one hour from my house. It was really far away because, you know, I, I, as I've said before, I live in a very far away location. I, I lived in a far away location when I was, uh, when I was, when I was in Kentucky and, um, it, I had to get a bus one hour. I had to sit in the bus for one hour and it was boring every single day. Uh, and whenever I got to the, to the place where the golf course was, there was a lot of people there, but every other location was, you know, very empty. 
And so on the way back from the golf course after playing golf, this, this lonely journey that I usually took, I was just listening to music alone, doing nothing. And the bus never had any people in it because I'm the only person that's going back to my hometown. Um, there was this girl there just randomly. I was, as I said, 11 at the time. So there wasn't any like romantic feelings between us. I just saw her. She saw me and she decided to sit next to me and start talking to me. And we talked about, I don't know, the most kind of benign things, the most like, you know, not serious, just random stuff. But it felt incredibly cute because, uh, you know, whenever you're lonely and you don't have a lot of friends, it's very nice to get someone to talk to you. And I don't really know why she did it, but she just did. We talked about, you know, uh, my future, our families, you know, how life is going about our education plans. You know, I think at the time she was, uh, she was like a, like a master's degree, I think. And I was, you know, I was a small baby. I was just finishing school. Uh, I, I was getting to school and uh, we talked about life. We talked about stuff and I don't know, it was one of the kindest conversations I've had. As I said, I, I never saw her again, which is very unfortunate, but uh, it was really interesting and very unexpected. And that's, that's, that's a person that I really enjoyed talking to. Uh, I wish I could remember her name. Yeah. That's about it. By the way, that is a real story. Real story. I still don't know who she was. She just came up to me. It was really cute, man. It was it was good. It was good. I was kind of depressed at the time. Uh, but yeah. After that, I stopped playing golf because I realized that I don't want to travel for like one hour. My, my speech finished, by the way. I'm just adding to the story. Anyway, yeah. So uh, that's a bit of a part two. Shazza, tell me, what words did you hear? Um, uh, there are some like really natural vocabularies that Americans usually use um randomly like i you know not only from you whenever i watch youtube videos and particularly like uh, american uh, pranksters or american youtubers they use it probably on a daily basis the word randomly absolutely it comes from the word random which means like different it's like just just things happening like all the time yeah so that's that's what the brand that's what the word random means yeah thank you so much i was good nice what's next yeah. And the next one is far away location. Yeah, far away location is a, uh, I think it's written with a dash, far away. It means like very far, basically, yeah. But far away location is a very, very strong collocation, so I recommend you to use it, yeah. Mm -hmm. The next one is lonely journey. Yeah, also very strong collocation. I use really strong collocations. If you guys want to know why, it's because you watch a lot of YouTube videos, you listen to a lot of English, and you start using English that is realistic. I mean, of course, I also had the added benefit of, you know, listening to other people and reading books and all that kind of stuff, which is very helpful. Uh, but by listening to YouTube, you can really imitate a lot of that. So I really recommend you guys to start doing that. It's, it's important. Yeah. Okay, what's next? Uh, the next one is romantic feelings. Let me actually give me a second. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add this to the vocab from today. Give me a second. Da, 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 da. Randomly, uh, far away, far away location. What's next? Lonely journey. Feelings. Yeah, romantic feelings uh, is also a very good collocation. Just in general, um, like... Today, I think most of the vocab that I used, it wasn't necessarily really academic high-level vocab, but it was just really strong collocations and things that people say because, you know, I am the people that say, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. romantic there feelings. A lot of, like, natural vocabularies that I really like. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one word that I used, which I actually, which is like an uh, academic word, is benign. Uh, I think it's actually not benign. I think it's b b benign. Yeah, it's benign. I was about to mention it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. benign, but, uh, let me check the pronunciation. Wait. Yeah. You, you say like benign. you talk about benign, benign things. Yeah, exactly. So benign basically means gentle, kind, and not very serious. Like if you have a serious conversation, that is the opposite of benign conversation. Like benign is like, you know, not, not, not a problem. And another thing is like, for example, if you have cancer. If it's not going to kill you, then it's a benign type of cancer. That's also a good collocation. Okay. Shows up. Any other words? Yep. Uh, master's degree. Master's degree is like second level education after bachelor's. That's actually the third. It's like higher, higher education. Master's degree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what about bachelor's degree? Yeah, bachelor's degree is the first level. I mean, as, as you guys probably know, yes, it's, it goes uh, bachelor's, master's, PhD. Yeah, so those are those are the levels. Yeah, bachelor's is a good way to put it. I'm going to write that down. Is, is undergraduate a great synonym for bachelor's degree? Yes, it is. Okay. And Undergraduate the next graduate, one. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, random stuff. 
You say like we talked about random stuff. Yeah, random stuff is just a very like, strong American publication. Uh, it's just like something that native speakers say when they don't know what they're talking about. Like usually we don't say etc or like etc while we're talking. We say random stuff. Random stuff is like the the natural way to say etc. Yep, that's it. For sure. Awesome. Yeah, thank you guys so much. And uh, once again, like, you know, if you guys could uh, make an Instagram stories, it would be great. It, it would mean a lot. Alex Native Isles, just post three words that you learned today. Hopefully, there are a lot of words because this lesson is awesome. Uh, thank you to Shazad for, you know, organizing this. And we organize this together. We add yeah. a lot of different words. Uh, yeah, Shazad yeah. is uh, awesome as always. Thank you. Uh, do you have anything else you got to say? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just as a reminder, once yeah. again, if your exams are coming up soon, uh, you can purchase a package deal with um, feedback from Johnny, plus also the last recorded pack, uh, last recorded, blah, the last course that was recorded. We have been, done two courses. This is the second one. The first one, you can buy all the lessons recorded. There's 21 lessons uh, similar to this. There's vocab, there's uh, techniques, there's grammar, a lot of really cool stuff. Also a lot of pronunciation. Last course, we focused a lot on pronunciation and like how to say things correctly. There's not that much of it. This course, this course, we're going to talk about it a little bit, but uh, we had like pronunciation every week. It was it was good stuff. So you could like I was gonna download talk about the that actually. Yeah. Say so some people asking like oh, why is it course is like two hundred fifty? Why is this one is three hundred fifty? As uh, the main reason is that a uh, recorded course it's recorded and it doesn't include live feedback from Alex. However, this course is a live course. First of all, it's another experience. You you get to watch it live and learn it live, first of all. And secondly, there is a live feedback from Alex. As uh, So, for example, first of all, we will have intensive 14 lessons where we explain a lot of vocabulary, a lot of ideas, and a lot of stuff for your IELTS speaking as we are doing these lessons. And after that, seven feedback sessions. So this is the biggest difference, and I'm sure... It's a privilege and it's an amazing opportunity for everyone to get feedback from Alex. And for that, you have to do your homework. Some people are not sending their homeworks. I encourage all of you, please send your homework, study hard, be motivated and be responsible, be disciplined. And then you will uh, get a chance to get feedback from Alex. After 14 lessons, we will dedicate seven lessons for solo feedback so stay ready guys for that and this is what's really amazing and unique about this course absolutely and thank you so much Shazad. uh yeah that's about it for today i hope all of you have a great day i will send the the homework uh right away guys i'm so happy that i have a new computer can you can you imagine <laughs>